What is going on my beautiful people? Have you guys been struggling to catch fish as the temperatures go up and we transition into those summer months? Because I know I have, but in today's video I'm going to hopefully explain why it is that the fish bite slows down and hopefully provide you a lure or two that uh, will help you guys out there on the water to catch these fish when the dog days of summer kick in and the fish kind of get a little deeper and they're not as easy to catch. So, guys, the reason that it's so much harder to catch these fish is because as water temperatures rise, the amount of oxygen in the water typically drops down. And what that does is it forms something called a thermocline, which, depending on the lake and the water temperature, is going to be somewhere around that 10-foot mark. So it can be higher, can be lower, depending on the water temperature. But what the fish will typically do is they're going to stay above that thermocline, especially bass. They don't like to be below it unless you're fishing a heavily grassed lake. The reason that in a heavily grassed lake they can go down below this thermocline is because the plants, when they do photosynthesis, they release oxygen into the water that the fish then breathe. So any kind of deep grass or any kind of vegetation like that will typically hold bass even during the hottest days of the summer and the hottest water temperatures because the fish can stay there because of the oxygen saturation in the water. Make sure you guys are looking for that grass because that's going to increase the oxygen saturation in those water levels and that's going to hold more fish. Another thing that's really good about increasing oxygen saturation in water is current. So any kind of current, any kind of waterfalls, any kind of ripples, maybe where drainage is coming in or something like that. If you guys can find and isolate those pieces of cover or those kind of occurrences, whether it's a grass bed or whether it is some sort of water flow that's coming in, you guys are going to find more fish because there's going to be higher oxygen levels there as the water temperatures increase. Now, now that I've kind of explained to you why the dog days of summer happens and why the fish are a little bit harder to catch because they're a little more or a little less lethargic because the oxygen can't get to their bodies because there's less oxygen in the water unless you're around that grass or unless you're around that water drainage or something like that, that current like I was talking about, what are you going to use to catch them? So early in the mornings, everybody knows you can go top water for the most part. Fish should like that. You can throw really anything early in the mornings while the water temperature is a little bit lower. But once the sun starts to come up, and I'm talking an hour, two hours past sunrise, what you want to do is you actually want to slow down. Yep, and I know this is going to be super boring to talk about, but you want to get you a nice weighted Texas rig, throw on a big worm, and uh, just kind of inch that thing across the bottom. And you want to bounce it and inch it and just go super slow. And eventually what's going to happen is the fish is going to hear that little tick, tick, tick. And they're going to come up, pick it up, and they're going to be on their way with it. All right, so let's talk about how to rig this Texas rig and uh, kind of the tips and tricks that I have about it that should help you guys to catch a couple more fish. So on your typical Texas rig, what a lot of people do is they'll take their line and they'll take their bullet weight or their sinker or anything like that. They'll run it on their line. They'll tie on their hook and they'll go about their business. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys a couple different ways that should help to improve you catch some fish. First of which is going to be a bobber stop. Make sure you have a bobber stop. Um, you can find these. It should be a little piece of plastic. They make some smaller black ones, but I have these bigger ones. Um, and I wanted to use these for, these for this demonstration. Then get you a bullet weight. This is three quarters ounce. It's a little bit big. This is more along the lines of something I would use for punching, but I wanted to get this one because it should help in this demonstration as well. This is a four aught extra wide gap hook. Um, you can use your preference of an offset worm hook or extra wide gap, whichever one you prefer. And then something that I actually like to do and uh, seeing a lot of people catch a bunch of fish on is take a extra little bead and kind of use it like a Carolina rig. So first off, what you want to do is get you a bobber stop. And if you've never used a bobber stop, let me explain how you put these on. So as you can see, there's kind of a little loop in the metal that it's on. Run your line through that loop and um, just pull the bobber stop off. And once you get that bobber stop pulled off, as you can see, that bobber stop is now on my line and that's where I had it kind of bent over. So make sure you pull that bobber stop up and over that. If you feel funny about that kind of kink, especially in fluorocarbon, um, you can definitely just tie your hook above that. Next thing you want to do is actually throw your bullet weight on. And the reason that you're going to use that bobber stop is, as you can see, it stops that weight from going any further up the line, which I really like. Um, 
because I like to be able to control my lure and not get it separated, especially if I'm fishing cover. A lot of the times what'll happen is this weight will run up the line and then your worm's gonna go through and as you pull through, it may get wrapped, it may get stuck, anything like that can happen. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this bead on. And that bead's gonna go on there just like that. And I'm gonna show you the purpose of that bead in just one second. Next up, I have an extra wide gap hook and I'm gonna tie a snail knot on here. It should fit perfectly on that, uh, on this little bend of the hook right there, as you can see by the eye. That's where that snail knot's gonna sit. If you guys don't know how to tie a snail knot, make sure you watch the video above where I talk about the top three knots that any fisherman needs to know. The snail knot is one of those knots, and I highly recommend it if you're fishing any kind of weighted Texas rig. And uh, I'll show you guys a little bit more as to why that is in just a second. All right, so once you got your snail knot nice and tight on there, go ahead and you can trim your tail end. What you're gonna end up with is a rig that looks kind of like this right here. Now, if you guys will pay attention, I'm gonna show you guys why that snail knot is so important. I'm gonna cover up my face here, that way the camera will focus on the hook. And uh, as you can see, as I go to set the hook, what did that hook do? It turned sideways, right? So once again, that's what my presentation is going to look like when I throw it, right? And as you can see that that's dangling down. I'm going to push down on this bobber stop, and as I do that, that hook kicked up, didn't it? That's the purpose of a snail knot. When you go to set the hook, the hook's going to turn. It's going to help that fish, or it's going to help the hook to get in the side of that fish's mouth or in the top of that fish's mouth, and you don't just pull that lure out. Plus, it's going to help it break through any kind of plastic that you put on here. One of the tips I have, and the reason I have this bead on here, right? So a lot of people are probably wondering, why did you put that bead on there? Well, as you guys know, beads vibrate, right? So that bead, as the water goes around it, is going to vibrate a little bit. What I like to do for a little bit of added bonus to that is I'll move that bobber stop up about a centimeter from the bullet weight. What that's going to do is it's going to let that bullet weight and that bead move around, and as I'm bouncing that around, I don't know if the microphone's good enough to pick that up, but it's going to make a ticking sound and it's going to vibrate, which is going to let that fish be able to teen in on it a little bit more. What kind of lures am I going to throw on this? I'm not going to take a 4-inch worm and put on this 4 aught hook and throw this around a point. What you want to do is get you a big worm. Personally, I like the Mondo worms from the Googans. This is a plum color. Works really good on points. I have watermelon red flake. I have some culprit worms that are 12 inches as well. Any kind of big worm or any kind of big creature bait, lizards work, trench hogs work, any kind of big lure. I mean, honestly, I would even put a bandito bug or some sort of small beaver style bait on here and I would throw that around. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll rig up this Mondo worm. As you can see, this is a big 12 inch worm. And this is the plum color. Run it right through to the start of that bend, come back through with it, run it up, run it up over that snail knot. That's gonna help you to protect part of your knot as well. Boom, got it sitting on that. Then line her up. Run it up, run the offset of that hook through the top of the worm, which is why I prefer a wide gap hook. Pinch it forward and get that tip covered up. And then that is how you're gonna rig that. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow the bead and that weight to move around. It's gonna vibrate and tick and it's gonna give it the appearance that this worm is chasing something. But you want to just drag this thing. I'm talking an inch at a time. Don't even pick it up, just drag it. When's the last time you watched a worm and saw it zipping through the water? You probably haven't. That's because worms crawl, they go slow, they're gonna inch their way around, and that's what you have to do. It's really boring fishing. I recommend you get some sunscreen and a sun hat and a cool beverage because you are gonna fish this essentially like you're dragging a catfish stink bait across the bottom and uh, trying to catch some fish that way. But find you some points, do that. I guarantee you guys catch some other fish. But yeah, guys, that is my number one lure slash tip for catching big bass in the dog days of summer is to rig a weighted texas rig with a little bead on there and uh, just have fun sling this thing around and i guarantee you guys you're going to catch more fish if you do it look for the cover like i said 
look for anything that's going to oxygenate the water and uh, that's where those fish are going to be stacked up so let me know if this tip helped you in the comments below let me know what you guys do when it's the dog days of summer to catch fish and uh, if you found this video informative and you'd like to see some more content like this make sure you hit the like button and uh, drop a comment below subscribe for more content like this turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any uploads and always remember when nature calls you better answer peace out guys